Hey, how's everyone doing today? Today we're going to be talking about inodes. This video will be perfect for someone that wants to get to data forensics or someone that just wants to know the deeper level of how the kernel and the file system works. All right, um, we're going to get started with the simple PowerPoints. Uh, it's not that extravagant. It's just very simple and to the point. I will be working on getting better equipment uh, for my video editing and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the best equipment at the moment, but yeah, I will definitely get better at this. All right, so what does inode stand for? It stands for index node. A inode is a data structure that stores information about a file or directory. It's like a file's metadata, but doesn't include the actual file name or its data. So think of it as a table, right? Um, I don't have a table, but think about it like, like an Excel table, right? And think about that table, and that table has information about the actual file, right? It doesn't have the file name in the table or its data, right? So because a file name usually is accessed by a dentry, it's called dentry, but we'll talk about that in another video. Think about it as DNS. So when it gets the number, it's able to actually find the name of the file. And then um, the actual um, inode actually has pointers to the data blocks. So it actually has the addresses of each block that the data is contained in. So that's what it does. That's why it says it doesn't have the data because it doesn't have the data. It does have the blocks where the data is contained and it doesn't have the name because it's not its job to keep the name. The job of the inode is to have all the data about the file. And it's important is because the utilities that we use like cat, for example, will probably need to see if it's allowed to read it, right? You might have other things that interact with it that might need permissions to interact with it. Um, it also might need to know the file size. What if the job of the actual utility is to get the size of the file, right? When you do LS, what does it do? It gets the size of the file. And this is something that it has to access from the inode, like the actual index table, right? That's what they call it, index table. Inode is the same thing. Um, also, when you're running stat, that has to grab the timestamps from the inode table, right? Um, you know, that's that's the point of it. Because without this, the when, when the when it's being accessed, when the kernel is accessing the inode number to interact with this, it's not going to be able to get the information that it needs if it doesn't have it. So it's very important. Inode tables are very important. All right. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay. So for the file system, right? Um, remember the file system has a bunch of inodes, right? And each inode is related to a directory or it's related to a file. All right. So the main thing you have to know is that each inode has um, is a table of data. This table of data tells you about the file or directory. And then here's the link to the blocks, right? Because th these are the blocks that it's pointing to that the actual inode is using. And remember, the inode is the file or the directory. All right, and these blocks is where the data is stored. Like if you have like a big poem, it's gonna be stored in these two blocks. And maybe these, um, or maybe these uh, th uh, these four blocks have some data, right? The fourth block might not be fully used, but it doesn't matter because it needs these four blocks in order to store the data. All right, we're gonna jump into my uh, Kali machine and I'll show you a little bit more. All right, just for context, right now I am inside of my directory or mount point, right? We can see here the, the disk SDB is mounted on this directory, okay? And I'm inside that directory. Right now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a file. And we're gonna call it hello world, very simple. And we're going to put it in file1.txt. Okay. When we do cat on file1.txt, we can see here that it says hello world. All right. So now if we use ls-i, right, we can see that there's two files created. The first I know number is 11. And the second I know number is 12. Remember, this is pertaining to the, um, to the actual 
file system because now we're inside a different uh, block device, right? Which is a different disk, right? So we can see that we have this inode number. All right, when we do stat on file1.txt, we can get some information. And some of this information is going to be from the inode table, right? The actual table itself that has data about the file itself, right? The file name, remember, that does not inside the inode table or the index node, right? This is generated by the stat command. It has eight blocks. Remember, it's 512 bytes. So by convention, it's usually 512 bytes because that's what the sector size was. And um, so it's not actually that. It just, you know, they put 512 bytes because that, that's what it's doing. I think it's like a POSIX convention um, to keep uh, standardization on file systems and things like that. Um, but like I said, it's actually, it says eight blocks because if you do eight times 512 bytes, it actually equals 4096. And this is the block size of the file system, like the default um, size. So if you have to like save text and let's say your text just have the word hello, it doesn't matter how big the file is. It's going to take up eight blocks no matter what. These eight blocks of 512 bytes. But really what we're looking at because the file system is using these chunks of 4096, it's going to take the whole 4096 bytes. Even if, you're, even if your file is only two bytes, five bytes, six bytes, doesn't matter. You're going to take up the whole block, right? So um, this is the actual block size that it's using. And it also tells you that it's a regular file. Because remember, this is metadata, like data about the actual um, inode itself, which is number 12, okay? <clears throat> now what we're going to do, we're going to unmount this. And we have to unmount it so we can actually um, look into it. So once we unmount it, we can use this thing called dump to FS, and we're going to do less on it. All right. And remember, we're going to look at the um, file system. We can see the last time it was mounted. We can see all this data here. The file system OS is um, Linux. It tells us um, like the the block size is forty ninety six, right? We can also look down here. We can see uh, blocks per group. It says each group has this many blocks. It tells you I knows per group is around 8,000 I knows per group. Gives you all that information. All right. If we go all the way down here, we can also see the size of the inode. And you can see the first inode was 11, remember? Because the very first file that it makes, the ext4, it makes the lost and found. Um, that's the very first uh, file that it had or the directory that it had, right? So we can see here is number 11, right? Um, we can see the, the size of it, um, the inode size that it uses for the table, for the info about the file. And if we go down here, we can see all these blocks. We can see the next inode that's free is number 13. Remember, we have number 12 for file1.txt. So 13 is the next inode that's free or table that is that, that is available to store data about whatever file that we're making or directory. All right, and remember there's tons of groups. So this first group zero, this is a group of blocks, okay? And it's basically gonna manage these group of blocks um, and how it's gonna be used. It gives you a little bit more information about how many inodes are free. There's two directories here and we have this many unused inodes, okay? These are the free blocks, like the number of free blocks and the inodes are free. These are the numbers that you can use for the blocks. Remember, each block is 4,096 bytes, right? We also have a super block, right? And the super block is stored at block zero. And the reason why this is important is because this is data about the file system. Without this, the file system will break. And you always have backups. So if one super block is corrupted, you have tons of extra super blocks, tons of backups, which is pretty cool. All right. Now we're going to get to the cool stuff. So if we do debug FS and we get here, now that you can see the I know number, I know the information, let's open up this disk, right? So we're going to open up this disk and on this disk, we have a file system ext4. So if I do ls on this file system, these are all the files in there. It's not much because I just created it. You can see here number 11 with the first I node. The second I node is what? Number 12 which is file1.txt, okay? Now, if I actually do a couple things, I can do help, which will give us more info. 
we can see here we can do and check this um, do I know to name translation so if I do I um, and check on 12 we can see that it tells me the file one.txt remember what does this is dentries dentries do this they're called dentries but we'll talk about that in another video it's like DNS almost right um, to, to put it in an easier perspective right it just maps the I know number to the file name all right, and then we have this thing called iCheck. And then th what this does is whatever block that the actual file is using is going to give you the inode information about it, right? So what we can do is run blocks on 12. Actually, blocks on, you need a file name for this one, file1.txt. As you can see here, this block number, 33280, this block is this data or this this block is assigned to file one.txt. So when we do I check, because we're trying to get the inode information from it, and we're trying to see what inode is using the block. We can see it's inode number 12. Inode number 12 is linked to file one.txt. We can see that by looking at this data right here, um, which is really cool. So something else that we can do, remember this is number 12, right? The next inode that's free is what? number 13. All right, we can also exit out of this. And then we can mount the file system again. And now what we can do, we can do echo hello world. And then we can do it on file 1.2. And then we can do it on stb-1. And if we do that, now we can actually see it should be inode number 13. It should be 13. Now, if we actually do the um, dump E2FS, we can see the next available inode should be 14. You can see right here, it's 14. That's the next available one. If we delete it, if we delete it, now it should be free again. Now you should be able to use inode 13 again, as you can see. All right, the next thing that we can do here, we can see that the block number that this actual file is using, it's only using one block of 4096 bytes. So we can see 33280, okay? If we do the dd command and we do it on this block on 2280, right? What we're doing, we're just, this is called data duplicator. We're just copying the data from that actual block, right? And we're doing one count because it's 4096. Once we do that, look what we get we actually get the actual ASCII form of the actual file. So these numbers are ASCII, right? So the cool thing about it is that we can also do it using cat. So if we cat um, stb1 um, file1.txt with hex dump, we'll get the same exact output, right? Very, very, like pretty much the same exact thing. The cool thing about this is that you can see that it used 4096 bytes. And the crazy thing about it, you can see here, only using this one offset, this one area or data. And this is signifying that the rest is 000, zero, zero meaning that there's no data for the rest of the block. It's empty. So that's why in a lot of systems, if you have very small files, right, and your block size is 4096 or something bigger, it's not efficiently used because you're going to run out of inode numbers. So your disk will show that you have enough space, but your file system won't be able to work properly because you don't have enough inodes in your system. And that's how you run out of inodes. That's why it's important to adjust your block size when you actually create your file system according to what you're using. If you're using a very, if you have very huge files, you can change the block sizes. The pros and cons are it, it takes longer to read those blocks, but there's always pros and cons to everything you do, right? Depending on how you're using the system. But remember, if a file has multiple blocks, right? Then what happens is that it'll read each block sequentially, like 221, that was one block, 222 is another block, 223 is another block. So if that's the case, it'll read the data sequentially from, from the first one all the way to the last one until it's done. Like until it sees the new line character, as you see, this is the new line character. Zero one is a new line character. So it will read it until it's finished and there's no more data to read. 
So it doesn't matter the order it's in. It tries to be sequential, but if it's not, it goes in order. That's why fragmentation is important because if I have one block here, another block here, another block here, another block here, this is very fragmented. And the bad thing about this is that it's going to um, affect your performance because it has to go to other parts to grab the data, right? Remember, all the analysis we're doing, it's on one of the disks, so which is dev sdb. Um, and that disk has the file system. So all the data that we're getting from dumpfs is for that file system particularly. So if I do ls-i right now, it's going to be different because this is on a different disk. This is, you know, the home, uh, the root folder is on a different disk. So we have different inode numbers, as you can see here. Different inode numbers. Like the boot drive is the inode number for this one is that we have a uh, boot. If we do that one, you can see here um, the information about boot, right? You can see boots, and then you can see the inode number. There's just three hard links, and it gives you a little bit more data about it. Um, that's pretty interesting. But like I said, the whole point of this is so you can learn a little bit more how it works. And like I said, the blocks that we're talking about, this is where the data is stored. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, if there's anything you guys want to watch, if you guys like the video, let me know. If there's something I can improve on, let me know. Uh, this is more like a um, video that I made because, you know, I do enjoy learning about the deeper level stuff. But if you guys enjoy too, that's awesome. Um, if you guys want to see other videos, let me know and explain things uh, more for you guys. Let me know, please. Uh, all right. Well, you guys have a great day and thank you for watching.